When it comes to protein powder, you have a whole lot of different options to choose from. There's whey, soy, egg, pea, casein, hemp, beef, and rice protein, just to name a few. And that's without me even getting into the hundreds, if not thousands of different brands. Also, there's a lot of both good and bad information out there about how much protein you should take, when to take it, and how to use it for building muscle. But unfortunately, there isn't all that much info out there at all about how to use protein powder for weight loss and fat loss. And that's exactly what I wanna teach you guys today in this video. Let me start by making one thing absolutely clear. You don't need any protein powder at all to lose weight. You can lose all the weight you want with real food. With that said, protein shakes can provide benefits that can make it much easier to stick to a diet plan, burn fat, and build muscle. There are actually a number of reasons why someone would wanna incorporate protein shakes while trying to lose weight. One reason is because research shows that you should increase the amount of protein that you take in while losing weight to prevent muscle loss. Protein shakes provide a quick and easy way to meet your increased daily protein requirements during a cut. Sometimes there's just not enough time in the day to make a meal. You should always try to have real food instead of protein shakes, but if need be, we can still get a lot of the benefits of a high protein diet by throwing in a shake or two per day. A high protein diet has been shown in studies to help reduce levels of ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone, and it's been shown to increase levels of appetite reducing hormones. If protein shakes can help us feel less hungry throughout the day, I think it's pretty obvious that that would help with sticking to a diet plan lower in calories. By decreasing appetite with protein, you can wind up saving a couple hundred calories a day. One study demonstrated that participants were able to save 441 calories per day without actively trying to limit calories just by increasing protein intake from 15 to 30% of their diet. Within 12 weeks, on average, the participants lost 11 pounds. And this isn't the only study like this. There's a lot of research out there that shows adding even a little bit of extra protein for breakfast can help curb your appetite for the rest of the day, allowing you to save 100 calories. Now, the important thing to remember is that a protein shake has calories in it. If you're just drinking a bunch of protein shakes throughout the day, you could exceed your daily calories resulting in weight gain instead of weight loss. So how much protein should you have to reduce hunger and appetite? Well, luckily there was a study done on this as well where they compared different quantities of protein ranging from 20 grams to 80 grams per shake and they found that all amounts decrease hunger by 50 to 65%. So to keep calories at their lowest for weight loss, all you need is about 20 grams of protein in a shake to significantly reduce appetite. You can of course add more protein to your shake to meet your increased daily protein requirements during a cut if you can't get enough protein into your diet with meals alone. A reduction in appetite isn't the only benefit you'll experience for weight loss from adding more protein to your diet. A study showed that giving extra protein in protein shakes to obese participants help them gain an extra 2.8 pounds of fat-free mass within 13 weeks. By increasing muscle mass, you also increase your metabolism, making it easier to keep the weight off after losing it. A higher protein intake in general is associated with better weight management after losing weight. A study involving 148 men and women showed that the group that received 48 extra grams of protein supplementation per day had regained 50% less weight within six months when compared to the other group that didn't. In another study, the same outcome was observed with only about 30 grams of protein. 50% less weight regain after dieting is a pretty significant statistic that cannot be ignored. And as far as muscle goes, even if you can't gain muscle mass during a cut, you'll at the very least preserve more muscle with a higher protein diet. One study even showed that a daily whey protein shake could allow you to maintain muscle while trying to lose weight at 3.5 times more efficiency than not having it. Now, to decide which protein powder is best, let's start by organizing the different types by dividing the protein powders first into two different categories, animal-based and plant-based. With animal-based protein powder, we can start with whey protein, which is a fast-digesting protein powder that comes from cow's milk. It ranks highest on the bioavailability index, which is used to measure how well our bodies can absorb a protein source, helping us rate protein quality. And it happens to be the most popular type of protein out there on the market. Whey protein comes in three different varieties. Concentrate, which has a protein content of about 80%, and the other 20% is a mixture of fats and carbs, which 
which makes it the most calorically dense out of the three. Then there's isolate, which has a purer protein content of around 90% or higher. So it has less carbs and fats and calories in general than concentrate while containing more protein that can be digested at a faster rate. The last one is HydroWay, which is the most expensive because the protein has been partially broken down for slightly faster absorption than isolate. So that's whey. Casein is the other dairy protein found in milk that isn't quite as bioavailable as whey, but it's unique because it's the slowest digesting protein powder, allowing for the slow release of amino acids into the bloodstream over time. Egg protein is slower digesting than whey, but faster than casein. It still ranks high in the bioavailability index and also still contains all nine essential amino acids that your body doesn't produce by itself, making it a great substitute for whey, especially for people with a dairy allergy or digestion issues. There's also beef protein powder, but I don't recommend it because even though the bioavailability ranking is great for real beef, this is not gonna be protein powder made from filet mignon. Beef protein isolate is mostly made from bones, skin, hooves, connective tissue, joints, hide, ligaments, and ears. This makes it a combination of collagen, gelatin, and leftover scraps. I don't recommend it. With plant-based, I wanna talk about the three most popular, which are soy, pea, and rice protein. Soy protein isolate contains all the essential amino acids you need, but shows some mixed results in studies. One study involving 90 overweight and obese participants found that the group that took in 56 grams of whey protein per day lost five more pounds of fat than the group that took in the same amount of soy protein per day. Another study showed that out of 56 participants, the group that drank skim milk, which is a combination of whey and casein, lost more body fat and gained more strength than the group that drank soy milk, or a carb-like beverage similar to Gatorade. Now, even though these two studies point to whey, other studies show that soy, egg, rice, and whey protein all lead to the same amount of fat loss. So more research is definitely required for fat loss, but as far as maintaining muscle, another short study concluded that whey is three times more effective than soy at preserving muscle during a cut. Whey protein is also by far the most researched type of protein powder available. Rice and pea protein don't have very much research at all, but soy is the most researched plant-based form of protein. One thing that we do know about rice and pea protein is that they don't have all the essential amino acids, but as long as you're eating a healthy diet with a large variety of different foods, this really shouldn't be a big problem. So between all the different types of protein powders, whey protein is the most researched and it seems to provide better results for both fat loss and increasing fat-free body mass. This is shown in numerous studies and there's even research directly comparing animal-based versus plant-based protein with whey and casein outperforming plant-based sources. Out of the three types of whey, I recommend isolate for weight loss because it's higher in protein while having less overall calories than concentrate. And there's no need to pay extra for the slightly faster digesting hydro whey since whey isolate itself is already one of the fastest digesting protein sources available. If you have a dairy allergy, egg protein is a great second place substitute for whey. Now, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, I want you to know that as long as you incorporate a mix of sources of protein in your diet, a plant-based protein shake can be almost as efficient as an animal-based one. If you want a plant-based alternative, I would go with a soy protein isolate since it has a lot more research than the other plant-based protein sources and has a complete essential amino acid profile. You can either do that or you can go with a blend of a couple different plant-based sources. In either case, while you're losing weight, you should aim for anywhere from 0.8 to 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight. As you get leaner and as you restrict more calories, you should aim for the higher range of 1.3 grams per pound of body weight to help you preserve more muscle mass. This is the correct amount of protein to curb appetite, increase your metabolism, and maintain muscle while losing fat. Try to meet your recommended daily protein intake by limiting protein powder consumption to only one to two scoops per day and try to get the rest from real food. You can have this protein shake with water, low calorie almond milk or skim milk to save calories. And the best time to have it would be either directly before or directly after your workout. There's no need to worry about having it as fast as possible after your workout either, as the short anabolic window that many people believed in for so long has been debunked by some pretty solid evidence. 
That's it guys, I really hope this video has helped you out and that you can now make a better, more informed buying decision when it comes to protein powder. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every single time that I release more free tips and tricks just like you found in this video. Also, it's important for me to once again reinforce that just simply drinking protein shakes won't result in weight loss unless the rest of your diet is also on point. To lose weight, you have to make sure that you're on a diet that incorporates the right foods while giving you the right amount of calories and also lowering your insulin levels. If you're serious about making a transformation and you wanna take the next step and try a done for you approach that requires literally no trial and error on your part, try my six week challenge, which on average has my clients losing either 20 pounds or 5% of their body fat in only six weeks. You get a customized diet plan, a 42 day workout plan, a recipe book, a full video exercise library, and much, much more, including an accountability coach that'll be assigned to you to check in with you every week to help answer questions and guide you through the entire process. As long as you don't cheat, and as long as you don't quit for the entire six weeks, not only will you lose 20 pounds or 5% of your body fat, but you'll also get the entire challenge for free. To find out more, you can click the link for the six week challenge in the description below, or you could visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.